Welcome everybody to this webinar. We're delighted that you're all here. We welcome back some of our old friends and some who are joining us for the first time. Uh, we're very lucky this afternoon to have Joe with us again to present on uh, motivation. Uh, these have been difficult times for everybody during lockdown and it's been a challenge getting the young people to uh, be involved. So we're hoping Joe will give us some good ideas this afternoon. So without any further ado, I think we'll give Joe the stage. So take it away, please, Joe. Thanks ever so much, Tony, for that lovely introduction. So welcome, everybody, to the webinar. Uh, it's a real pleasure for me to be here. And thank you officially to the British Council and to uh, Qatar Foundation International for giving me this opportunity. It's very much appreciated. And I hope that you find all the ideas shared in the next hour very useful. Um, as you know, I'm recording this session right now. So I'll be able to share that session uh, with you via my YouTube channel. Um, uh, about half an hour or so after I finish the, uh, the session, I will upload it straight away. And also, um, you'll get access to the actual presentation itself as well. If you would like to have the presentation, then I will give that to you by the end of the session as well. So you'll basically have access to everything during the session, which um, will, be, will be great, hopefully. So let's uh, get going. Oh, sorry, let's go back to the previous slide. Um, so I'll just give you a little bit of information about myself, if that's all right. So I'm a, I'm a former languages teacher. I taught for 13 years, teaching French at secondary school level for three years, and then 10 years at middle school level on the Isle of Wight, which is where I am right now and have been for about 12 weeks or so. And for the last 10 years, I've been an independent languages consultant. And normally I go all around the world running training and speaking at conferences in places like Australia, North America, um, uh, the Middle East, uh, Southeast Asia, all over Europe, South America, etc. So all, literally all over the world. Um, but in the last uh, few weeks, I've been doing lots of webinars instead, uh, this one being case in point. My contact details are below my avatar there. So I'm just at Joe Dell on Twitter. If you want to follow me on Twitter, feel free to do so. My email address is joedell at talk21.com as well. And I'm more than happy for you to contact me after today and ask me any questions about any th content that we're going to be covering or anything to do with languages and technology. Everything I'm going to be showing you in the next hour uh, is completely free. If there are any aspects to the tools I'll be showing you which are not free, I will mention that, but just presume that everything is free and that everything will understand um, Arabic script as well. So um, you don't need to ask me those sorts of questions because uh, that will be the case, okay? But if there are any questions that you have, please do... Um, uh, please do uh, ask me. So I can see that someone's asking me for my email in the chat. Hopefully you can see my screen. It's actually on my screen, but I'll give it to you right now. So it's joedale at talk21.com and you're more than welcome to um, ask me any questions that, that you might have. Okay, so let's move on to the second slide. So this is what we're going to try and cover in the next hour. Uh, it is a lot of information. We'll see how we get on. If we don't cover everything, it's not the end of the world, but um, we'll be able to cover most of this, I think if not all of it. So uh, the, the remit for this session is about motivation, either at Key Stage 3 or for Key Stage 4. So I've particularly chosen activities which I think um, are important to do with motivation and, and well-being, uh, starting off with Mentimeter, then we look at Jamboard and what have you. But we're just going to get into it straight away, if that's okay. And then you can see what you think. And if you feel motivated by taking part in the webinar, hopefully you do. Okay. So before I start, I wanted to mention that um, around this question of motivation, I decided to ask the, um, the languages community, which I'm part of, known as the MFL Twitterati, which has 5,000 members and is uh, made up of language teachers from secondary and primary, as well as some university lecturers as well, and uh, language consultants like myself and language associations from the UK and from Ireland. And um, I asked the question, you know, what are good strategies that you employ for maintaining motivation while remote teaching languages? And these are all the answers that came up. So I, what I did was I summarized them in this particular image, in this screenshot. So you can see things like praising students is incredibly important for motivation. That sort of human connection that you have, as you would have in the face-to-face -face classroom situation, is even more important uh, in, a, uh, in a remote teaching context. Uh, checking uh, in regularly with the classes. We're going to be talking about some different tools which allow you to do that, such as uh, Mentimeter and, and Jamboard, for example. Um, so keeping in regular contact with the students is very, very important. Um, looking more at consolidation over extension. So um, we've had, what, 12 weeks uh, of lockdown approximately. So 
uh, the advice has generally been that you should consolidate, revise content rather than trying to teach too much new content because that can be very tricky in a remote teaching context unless you're very experienced in this area. But clearly moving forward, say from September, then we will have to consider ways in which we're going to do that. And there's lots of then different tools which have been recommended around sort of, you know, short and snappy tasks to keep people motivated and, and on task, include competitions, fun tasks and what have you. So there's lots of suggestions here, some of which we're going to be looking at in this uh, in this webinar but um all that information there has all been um crowdsourced by me from uh, language teachers in the community that have uh, shared their ideas so that's very much appreciated um that i can then share that with you uh these different ideas that have come from practicing teachers things that they're doing in their classrooms at the moment okay right so the first thing we're going to do we're going to have a quick look at mentimeter so uh, Mentimeter, if you haven't seen it before, it does allow you to uh, use Arabic script in some of the activities. I think I'm right in saying that in the word cloud one we're going to do, first of all, it doesn't let you write an Arabic script, but feel free to, to try this out right now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come out of um, my presentation and go straight to the activity. And so what I'd like you to do, please, is I would like you to go to a new uh, tab or to use a secondary device and go to menti.com, as it says on the screen, go to menti.com and put in the code 571203, and then you'll be asked to input um, answers to the question, how do you feel about remote teaching your classes? So this is a nice activity you can do at the start of the lesson to motivate students to check in with them, see how they're feeling. Um, you could be doing this in the target language, or you could be doing it in, uh, in the, the language that everyone is, is speaking as their first language, whichever, whatever you would like. But um, I think it works really nicely using it it's in the target language as well. So if you could all go to menti.com and I can see the first thing that's come up is challenging. That's great. So menti.com and then the code is 571203 like that. So there's two different websites here. There's Mentimeter, which allows you to create the presentation. And I'm not going to go through today on how to do that because we won't have time to, to be able to cover all the ways in which you create the presentation. There were lots of online tutorials on how to do that. But uh, once you've made the presentations uh, and you share them in this way, then you can see the benefits of doing so. So as you can see, we've got words like enjoyable, interesting, challenging. So keep them coming, please. Uh, wow. OK, so you find that remote teaching is boring. Well, if you find it boring, then that's going to be very challenging uh, indeed. And obviously, I'm here to help if you find it boring. But um, it's important, even if you are feeling that you're, you're bored yourself, that we don't pass that on to our students, because otherwise, they'll get bored as well. And then that's a, a no win situation, I think. So I'm sorry to see that, but um, if uh, you feel like that, then uh, I can obviously help and other people can help as well. Because um, it's it, that's the thing, isn't it? At the moment, uh, particularly those people who maybe have been anti um, educational technology, we're now in a situation where, where, whereby everyone is being forced to use educational technology. And it could be those people, one of the silver linings could be from that is that those people who maybe have been reluctant to use it in the past, uh, now we'll have uh, an understand, a better understanding on on the power of using educational technology in order to deliver remote teaching, uh, remote learning. Okay, so we can see things like we've got uh, tricky, challenging, um, uh, boring, as I said. So we've got some negative things there. We've also got some very positive things there, such as enjoyable, um, exciting. So we've got a real range, but the, the biggest word there is the word which has been used the most in the session, which is challenging. So I can see that in this group, as opposed to in other groups when I've done this activity, is that maybe you're feeling you know, the pressure of, of doing remote teaching. So this webinar should be very useful for you, I would imagine, and should help you not only with your own motivation, but with the motivation of your students, which is what this is all about. Okay, let's move on to the next question. So in the next question, if I hover over the uh, floating toolbar bottom left, I can now click on the arrow there and that will take me to the next question and thank you ever so much for all your responses so far okay so in this question this is a bar chart question so you can see I've got the statement at the top there what platform are you using to deliver your classes if you're not delivering classes which are best for you so this is presuming that you're all doing your lessons um, synchronously live lessons if you're not doing live lessons feel free to put that in the chat and if you're not using zoom Microsoft teams or Google meet if you're using another tool please can you put that in the chat as well just so I get an idea of the other things that you're using perhaps you're using Skype or using something like uh, Blackboard Collaborate or, or Adobe Connect or one of those sorts of tools 
Um, so I can see that in this session, most people are using Zoom, which is interesting. Ah, so some people are using Google Meet, okay. So those people have put other, the three people have put other, feel free to, um, to add in what you use. Ah, so Nancy, you're using WebEx, for example, I, I see. Interesting. Okay, it's always fascinating to see what people are using. Um, I don't know if you all know, but Google Meet is now completely free to use, even for you know, personal users. Um, so it used to be called Google Hangout. It's now called Google Meet. But um, before, you had to be a G Suite subscriber, whereas now anybody can use it with a Gmail account, which is great. The only downside is you can't record sessions in Google Meet unless you have a G Suite account. So again, that's a really nice way, I think, um, in getting some information from the students. You could have a statement there, such as um, uh, online learning is a good idea. And then the different columns could be, for example, strongly agree, agree, disagree, and then strongly disagree, for example. So by doing that, you can then use that as a uh, vehicle for discussion. You can interact with the answers as they're coming in in real time, as you can with the word cloud as well. And therefore, you'll, you can then uh, use this as a way of practicing speaking and giving people a real reason for practicing their speaking as well. So I can see that, uh, Chadia, you're using Microsoft Teams as well. That's lovely. So we've got one more question in the Mentimeter, which is this one. What tools are you currently using to, to and I've, again, I should have changed this from before. I'm, I made the same mistake this morning. So I will just quickly uh, change the spelling there because it should say teach languages, not uh, teaching. There we are. So can you please let me know uh, not only the uh, video conferencing tools that you're using, but other tools you're using in conjunction with those video conferencing tools, such as perhaps Quizlet or tools like that. So I get a flavor of the sorts of ways in which you are integrating technology into your remote teaching at the moment. That'd be very handy. So I'll just give you a moment to do that, please. Okay, thank you for putting that in the chat. If you could put it into the Mentimeter as well, that'd be really handy. So Quizlet, Flipgrid, Edpuzzle, for example, Kahoot, okay. Microsoft Word, uh, okay, Google Classroom, Quizlet. Okay, keep them coming, that's great. Okay, different videos, Google Docs, Canvas. Okay. Fantastic. Schoology. Yep. Okay. Zoom, as we've said, Moodle. Okay. H5P. Okay. I'm not, I don't see that one that often. Uh, that's lovely. Keep them coming. Quizzes. We're going to have a look at quizzes later on. Plickers. So using plickers in a remote teaching context, that's interesting. I would have thought that would be a bit tricky in a remote teaching context, unless everyone holds up their cards at home, maybe. Okay. Um, could you mute your microphone, please? That's all right. I'll just do it for you, in fact. Here we are. Okay, thank you. Please don't have your microphones on during the session unless you, well, if you want to ask me something, please ask me in the chat. That'd be great. So again, we've got a range of tools there that are coming up that people are using. Uh, Padlet, Edpuzzle, some favorites there for sure. Uh, quizzes, some of which we're going to be having a look at in this session. Uh, and a lot of those sort of interactive games, I think, are particularly good for motivating. And I think that to do those at the end of the lesson is a particularly good idea. So that's Mentimeter. If you haven't seen Menti Mentimeter before, I would really recommend that you do have a look at that uh, because it's a very nice tool. If I want to uh, change the, uh, the, the word cloud to a different format, what I can do is I can click on the three lines bottom left and it gives me the opportunity to click on change layout. And by doing that, I can go from the word cloud to speech bubbles. And now you can see that what's actually happening is you can see each item as a separate entry, as a separate tile, if you, if you will. So you could use this, for example, as an exit ticket. In other words, you could ask the students to write in uh, the information that you're asking them and you can then input your uh, your answers there. Uh, this particular um, slide definitely accepts Arabic language. So feel free to post something in Arabic and it will work uh, no problem at all. Um, so with that in mind, um, I think we're now ready to move on to the next um, idea. Um, I just click on the exit option here. And just very quickly, I'm just gonna show you, if we go back to, if I click on home, and if I click here where it has the export results option what you can do is you can download the whole of the slides as one uh, pdf sorry jadir what do you want me to show you again do you mean the, the slideshow do you want me to show you that again 
yeah okay let's do that quickly then just so you can check that you can input um the arabic script which you will be able to so let's just go to here if i click on present and we go to the next slide which is the one that it will definitely work with so on this one if you input arabic it will definitely allow you to to, to do that so if you just want to practice that now then that will be fine no problem you're very welcome So anyone in the room, if you want to practice that now, just by adding some Arabic onto the page, then you'll see that that will work absolutely fine. If you do that now, that'd be lovely. Is that okay, Chadir? Could you write um, something in Arabic? Otherwise, we can move on to the next idea. If that's okay, just just so to show that it does work, or anyone else for that matter. Lovely, perfect. Thank you ever so much. So, as you can see. On the screen, we've got Arabic scripts, so you can use this one uh, for Arabic, no problem at all. So that could be, as I said, a good exit ticket activity. To, so the students uh, aren't allowed to leave the session, as it were, until they've posted an example showing that they've understood the content that you've been doing. So, for example, if you're talking about some phrases in the past, they could then post an example of what they uh, did last week, for example. And then they would have to include their name there because it's designed to be anonymous. There is also a, a profanity filter built into Mentimeter, uh, which will allow you, uh, which will stop most words, obviously. But if the uh, students use um, uh, slang or informal word or use a symbol instead of a letter, then probably that will get through, in which case you'd have to then move on to the, the next slide or, or do a, uh, use a different presentation. So thank you ever so much for uh, Chadia for adding that. That's lovely. So just to prove it does work with uh, Arabic script. So if I now click on the home option, and I go to the export results option, you can see that I can now download all these slides as one PDF, or I can export each individual uh, slide as a separate image. So if I click on the PDF option here, as you can see, it now comes up like this, and I've got the whole thing as one PDF. And as you can see, that's including the Arabic script there as well, which is lovely, okay? So that's really, really nice. I think uh, Mentimeter is, is great. And uh, everything I've shown you, it's completely free. Um, and so as a result of that, it means that um, you can make up to three slides per presentation. If I, in fact, let, I know I've just said I haven't got time to do this. So I just give you a quick flavor of how it works. If I click on new presentation and I just put in Arabic supplementary schools, Okay, test. Uh, and click create presentation. Yeah, so as a teacher, you need to create an account, but the students do not need to create an account to go to Menti. So Menti is for the students, Mentimeter is for the teachers. So you'd have to go to mentimeter.com and create an account, but the students do not need to create an account. So as you can see here, we've got an interface that looks a bit like a PowerPoint. So if I wanted to create a word cloud, for example, I click here. I put in a question such as, how are you feeling? Okay, I choose a number of entries. I would, could put in say eight or seven or what have you. I've got the profanity filter here, which is available in a number of different languages. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't include Arabic and I don't think Arabic works with the word cloud one, but it does with the, uh, the speech bubble ones on the last one that I showed you. Um, okay, so I can see you can't see how to download the presentation. So basically you just click on the home option you go to where the link is to your presentation, you click on the export results option, which is a black arrow pointing downwards, and that allows you to export the presentation as a PDF. Don't forget, I'm recording this so you can watch back the video as well. So you can see that that's how this works. And then on the last uh, option, it says let participants submit multiple times for a word cloud. I would say that's a good idea. It doesn't matter that they submit multiple times, but for other ones, I wouldn't recommend that because you're gonna have too many messages to deal with. Right, you then click add slide. Uh, you then choose another option such as multiple choice. 
you put in a statement here. So you write, for example, online teaching is a good idea. And then in the different options, you write, for example, strongly agree, agree, disagree. And then you click add if you want to add another option. You say, for example, strongly disagree. Okay, so you can see they've now appeared here. So as a result of that, when we click present, you can then um, uh, ask the students the, uh, to put in their information and it will all then appear on the screen. So for this one, you're, you're uh, choosing what the statements are going to be and they just show um, what they feel that, that the, the answer is. So there's only one possible answer per uh, slide for this one, yeah? So, yeah, good question from iPhone there. Please put your actual name there so I know who I'm talking to, that'd be lovely. Um, the idea is I would suggest that you write, um, that they write their name so it's clear who has written what, if you want to use it as an exit ticket. Thank you, Lena. So you would ask them to write their statement and then ask them to write their name as well. So it's not, in that case, anonymous. Uh, it's a great question. The next thing I want to point out is if you click add slide, the first time you do this, it will say that uh, you need to um, invite uh, a friend or use a, the email address of a friend to be able to add a third slide. Now I know through experience that if you just make up an email address, e.g. mickey at mickeymouse.com, then it will work. And so you don't actually have to have another email address of someone else or your own email address, you can just make up an email address. So if I, for example, click on the add slide option now, I get my third slide and from then on, um, I can then, um, whenever I go to Mentimeter, I can always make three slides. So I could, for example, go to open-ended, like this, and then I can then ask a question. So I could, for example, say, tell me how you are feeling. Or I could say, you know, talk about what you did last week, whatever it is that I, I, I'm asking. Again, we've got the profanity filter, which I can turn on. And then at the end there, you've got the let participants submit multiple times. If it's a big enough group, I would not recommend that's a good idea because you'll have too many messages to deal with. But this is what I'm saying, that as an exit ticket, you could use this as long as you ask the students to say uh, their name on the uh, on the screen. So that's it. So that's Mentimeter. That's giving you a little bit of an insight on how that would work. So I'm going to go back to my presentation now and crack on with the next part. But hopefully that's giving you an idea. Here's a few um, uh, screenshots of tweets that language teachers have sent out uh, when they've been using Mentimeter. So that'll give you a flavor of how they're using it. So here, Jude, you've got uh, her saying, I used Mentimeter today with year nine, brilliant for creating revision tools, one of two errors, but we can sort those out and have a go next week. So she's using it. Uh, she's using the open-ended task there and she's asking them to use the uh, imperfect, test, uh, imperfect tense plus conditional tense structure of uh, the, uh, an if clause with the um, imperfect plus conditional. Uh, on the right hand side, Karen is using uh, the same activity, the open ended activity, whereby she's written a statement, my back hurts because, and then all the students have then written in their answers there. Uh, Andres, who's a Spanish teacher from Malaysia, he's using the uh, bar chart option and he's put in an image, which you can do, you can add an image if you want to, which has got nine little squares on it of different dogs and they're supposed to uh, write in the bar chart which dog represents their best feeling or how they're feeling at that moment which is a nice idea I think and on the right hand side there at the bottom I've used Mentimeter uh, many times but two years ago I used it to ask the question in the conference I was in at the time how can you assess how your school can effectively integrate apps and online resources to promote pupil engagement and to develop out of school learning and you can see all those answers have now come in and um, I've been able to share that with the uh, wider community. So again, there might be some tools there you've not seen before that you could consider using when remote teaching. Okay, right. We're now gonna have a look at Jamboard, if that's okay. I'm gonna click on the link here and I'm gonna share my uh, screen. Well, I'm sharing my screen with you already. I'm gonna share this whiteboard with you. So to do that, I click on the um, copy link option, having clicked share. And then in the chat, I can now post this in right now. So can you click on that link for me, please? And that will then take you to this Jamboard. And then what I'd like you to do, please, is I'd like you to click on the image option. 
add image. So this is again, good for motivation, I think, because you can draw, you can add an image. And then you click on the Google image search here, Google image search, and then you write in a word representing how you're feeling about remote teaching. So for example, if I write the word happy and I do a search, then an image will come up. I select one of those images and I click select. And then I put the image on the screen where I want to uh, see it. So if you have an iPad, you'd have to download the app. I'm just suggesting really if you're on a laptop, if you're on a laptop, you can just access it via the browser. Please don't make your image too big. Uh, that's quite a big image, which is great. That's, that's a really nice indication of how you are feeling at the moment, like a, like a, a bird who's um, having a bit of a panic attack, I think. If you want to draw a picture, if you click on the pen tool, you choose a color, you choose a marker or pen or highlighter, and you can draw a little image like this. So if you're loving remote teaching, then you could draw a picture of a heart if you wanted to. Um, if you can make your pictures not too big, if you can sort of uh, make the, the size of the picture a bit smaller, that'd be great. So um, I'm not sure what that one is representing. Someone's sitting back and enjoying themselves, I think, on their armchair. So again, this can be a really nice vehicle for um, speaking uh, as well as writing. So I think um, Jamboard definitely can be used in so many different ways. I'm going to sh share some more examples with you later on um, about ways you can use it for playing games, for practicing grammar and all the rest of it. Um, please don't click on the clear frame option because if you do that, it means everything will be deleted and it's only the person who has clicked on clear frame that can then um, do undo so it then comes back again. Um, so what I would recommend always when you're doing um, this type of activity is that you click on the three dots top right and you click make a copy because by doing that, you've always got the original copy so that, um, I see, so relax, thank you for clarifying. Um, so if you already got a copy of it, it doesn't matter if a student uh, wants to be a bit silly and wants to um, delete something or remove something or what have you, um, you've always got the original copy as well. Although it is annoying that they do, if they do do that. And obviously you could draw some inappropriate content, but I'm not suggesting that you do that at all. Um, so we don't need, you, you could do, duplicate the, um, uh, the little sticky notes, but you don't need to do that. What you could do instead is double click on it and then write uh, something else like text, for example. Uh, you can use uh, any color background you want here out of the choices, or you can click on the none option and that allows you to have the text looking like that. Okay, so I can see that a few, uh, this one's not appearing for some reason, so I'm just gonna delete that if that's okay. So again, I can get a nice sort of feel for how everyone's feeling in the room. So um, most of these are positive, I think, um, with the, uh, the flapping bird as well. But again, you can see how this could work. So I think this is a very motivating way of getting uh, your students to show how they're feeling. And I think that uh, if we can get them to, to say how they're feeling at the start of the lesson, that should help with, um, with, with delivering a good lesson because if they feel comfortable and relaxed because they've expressed how they're feeling, then that's good. Yeah, you can move it up and down like that as well, but it might be an idea to uh, have it nice and straight like this, as I'm doing right now for you and then just reduce it a little bit. So that's giving you an idea on Jamboard, if that's okay. So I'm just going to go back to my presentation. Thank you ever so much for those people that are contributing to that. And I'm going, going to show you some examples of different Jamboards you can use. So I've made 60 examples. I'm not, I'm not going to go through every single one of them now, but they've, uh, they're all in the uh, present, present, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Maybe, hang on. No, I'm okay. I thought it was going to sneeze then. Sorry about that. Right. So if I click on the, um, the top link, I've made 60 different um, examples of how you can use Jamboard. So if you can see the screen right now, thank you, uh, Reem. Thank you. Uh, you can see that uh, the first idea is I would be using screencasting, screencastify in this way to draw onto the screen while recording the screen so that I'm able to then make uh, like a grammar explanation or or some sort of activity describe, uh, ex, um, ex describing what I'm doing, or it could be for video feedback as well. Uh, if I go through here, if you click on the arrow there, top right, you can go through and see all the different other ideas. Um, so again, I'm gonna give you copies of these in the presentation. So this is when you're doing a starter activity using crosswords, which again, I think is very uh, motivating for students. They like that sort of crossword activity in my experience. So you could use that as a starter activity in, in a Jamboard. Uh, you can do like a drag and drop using an animated GIF as a, a Bitmoji. I made this using gifmaker.me, uh, which is quite nice. 
Um, you can then go on to another one using breakout rooms. That's explained there on how to do that. If you, um, if you want to use breakout rooms in Zoom, I'd encourage you to do that. If you do a search for a gentleman called Russell Stannard, who's in that video or that, that little thumbnail there, you'll find his YouTube channel and he's done lots of videos, including a whole range around Zoom. And he explains how to make breakout rooms there. And you could assign one frame per Jamboard to a group in a breakout room, which would be useful. And then you've got lots and lots of other activities. I could go through all of these, but I haven't got time to do that right now, but it'll give you a flavor of how you can use, uh, how you can use Jamboard. If I go on to the second uh, Jamboard example, the uh, first activity, if I just wait for it to load, is uh, this was actually submitted by um, a colleague in the MFL Twitter artist. You've got a question here, do you prefer basketball or volleyball? And different answers that are coming up on the screen. You've got uh, this activity. This is when you remove the background using a website called remove.bg, which is quite fun. And then you could add like a speech bubble to introduce the lesson. Uh, you've got a register that you could get the students to do. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you uh, Farida the link to the whole presentation at the end. So don't worry. I'm just going through this now, but this will give you an opportunity to to get a flavour, and then you'll be able to watch the recording back. This is an emoji check-in. So the idea is that the children would write their names um, on the different post-it notes and then um, a, um, drag and drop it according to where they felt they were uh, on the scale of very happy down to feeling sad and depressed um, and so on and so forth. This is a battleships activity. So you can put in different items here and different items here. Uh, put one board on one frame, another board on another frame, and then they can play uh, battleships with each other. So that's giving you a few ideas on how you can use Jamboard. But there are 60 ideas in total, um, which I put together in the last few weeks, which you should find useful, I think. Okay, if you have the um, iOS app or the Android app, you get a few more tools in Jamboard. So if you click on the pen tool, for example, you get these assisted drawing tools. So for example, with the A one there, if you uh, enable that and you start to write a word, it will turn that word into um, uh, text. It won't work with Arabic, it only works with English and with Japanese, but it is there uh, available for you. If you draw, if you click on the second one and you draw a circle or a square or a triangle, it turns it into a perfect square, circle or triangle. If you click on the third one, the pen tool one, that's an auto draw option. So in that one, if you draw a picture of a cat's face, it will suggest uh, some clip art, which will then look like a cat's face. So you can then add that in. So that's a really nice way of adding clip art into your Jamboard. So the, the basic web version is more limited compared to the app version. Um, and so, yeah, you can do more things with the app if you have the app as well. But it is a bring your own device tool that will work on all platforms. You just need to have um, the, uh, the app if you're going to use it on a mobile device. Okay, so that's how that works. Right, I thought I'd mention this uh, around sort of safeguarding ideas and security features. Now, as you said, most people in the room are using either Zoom, Teams, or Meet. Some of you are using WebEx and, uh, and other tools. But um, what I did was I asked um, some experts who are language teachers who are using these different tools. I asked them the same questions via a Google form. Um, and they then filled in the, um, the form for me. And, and then I took all their answers and put them the answers into um, this table. So as you can see, this has all been ratified and quality assessed. And so you can see that you've got questions such as, can attendees join a session before the teacher? Can the teacher enable a waiting room? Can the teacher automatically mute attendees audio upon entry into a session, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so you've got the answers there for the three different platforms. And you've got two pages of this, this first page. And then if I go on to the next slide, you've got the second page as well. So that should allow you to see all the, the sort of recommended ways of setting up your sessions safely okay so i chose these three tools because these seem to be the most popular and um, if anyone wants to take the same questions and do the same thing for other tools such as webex etc feel free to to do so okay again um, i thought it'd be useful to talk a little bit about safeguarding so for example uh, in the uk there are lots of um, schools which are banning live lessons so synchronous learning uh, for safeguarding reasons and so if you are doing live lessons here are some, uh, a couple of pages of guidance on how to make sure that you use uh, the tools wisely. So um, this is particularly focusing on Zoom. And this is by Ross Morrison McGill, who is known as Teacher Toolkits Online. 
and he's put this um, guidance together using official documents from Zoom, for example, but the, the ideas can be referred to any um, video conferencing tool. So things, for example, like uh, not allowing uh, students to um, take part in a session in their bedroom for obvious reasons. Um, so they'd have to you know, choose a, a place in their lounge or somewhere appropriate in their house to do a, a live lesson. But it is problematic if you have, for example, one uh, device that uh, maybe the father or the mother is trying to use to, to work from home, that the children need as well for their remote lessons, it's challenging. And that's why some schools prefer to offer uh, asynchronous exclusively or live lessons exclusively or a mixture. And so, yeah, I think a mixture is the best way forward, but I think to eliminate live lessons completely, I think um, is, is, is a shame, but it's understandable in certain situations. So here's the, that's the, the, the safeguarding tips. Here's some more advice around safeguarding. This is from the UK Safer Internet Center. Uh, so again, you can click on the link on that, on that page and you can follow their advice to make sure the students are as safe as possible when you're doing live lessons. And this is actually from the supplementary schools um, uh, website, which um, you should find particularly interesting, I'm sure, uh, from the NRCSE. And again, if you click on the link, you can see the advice that they're giving there as well. Okay. Right, we're now going to uh, look at some other ideas around motivation. I particularly like this idea around uh, remote speaking practice, and I'm just going to show you this live. So this is called Quicker. I don't know if anyone has seen this before, but if I just go to the website and go to Quicker dot education uh, you need to have an account as a teacher but it's free to sign up for an account this was created by a physics teacher in the southwest of england and originally the idea was to use it for individual um, um, bits of audio attached to a qr code which you could then use for for example audio feedback but then uh, the teacher in question made it possible to have a thread of um, audio attached to a uh, uh, to one qr code so you could use it for for example dialogue work or for for speaking practice. So um, if I click on create instant feedback now, I can see that uh, Nazek, you've said that our school creates an essential agreement with students, parents and teachers for Zoom protocols. That's an excellent idea. If you're able to uh, share that document, um, obviously with your school's agreement, then I'm sure everyone would find that very useful. So I've just clicked on the, the link to come in here on the instant feedback link. And then I click where it says start a quicker conversation. So I click on that. And that will then take me to a new page. And I now click on the record option to record the first part of the audio like this. Here we go. Blah, 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 blah. This is an example of uh, me recording some audio using the quicker uh, conversations tool. So I've just clicked stop. It's uploaded onto their servers, which are based in, in Europe, which is great from a GDPR point of view. And uh, you can see here, I can also take a photo. I can add some text, I can add a web link. And what I, but what I particularly like about this is the fact you can moderate the conversation, which is perfect for what we want to use it for. So I've recorded the first part of my audio. I then click on start your quicker conversation, which is here. And what that will do is that will take me to another page, which you'll see in a moment. I'm gonna share the link for this in the chat right now, like this, okay. Um, and so if you click on that link, it will allow you to, to go to this page. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do it live in front of you. So I'm, on my iPad, I've just launched um, my QR code scanner. I'm now going to click on the Chrome extension, which I have installed called the QR code extension. As a result of that, I can scan the QR code, which will then take me to the page that we're on currently. And that will give me the option to tap on the uh, microphone, uh, the blue microphone with the white, or so the blue circle with the white microphone inside it. So once it's loaded up on my, on my page, I can tap on that and I can now tap record like this and tap uh, uh, allow my microphone to access the site. Here we go. Okay, so th this is me recording the second part of the conversation. So this could be um, a line in a dialogue, for example. I could have a back and forth practice with them. Um, with my teacher as a student practicing a dialogue or vice versa or um, I could have student to student um, interaction practicing a dialogue or a student could record a presentation I could then as a teacher give audio feedback etc 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 so this is a really powerful way of promoting speaking remotely uh, in our current context so now to stop recording I press stop 
Okay, then uploads onto the servers again. Okay, that's processing as we speak. Once it's finished processing, it will then appear live on my page, which it should have done uh, right now. And what I would absolutely love you to do, if that's possible, is for you to do the same thing, for you to record something quickly for me and, and publish it on the, um, on the page, and then we'll see what it looks like. So I don't think there's a limit for how long you can record for, but with a free version, um, the audio is only available for about a month and a half but you can always right click any of the players. Can you see I've just right clicked on the screen and I can click save audio as, and that, that allows you to download the audio as a WAV file. So you, then, you can then keep it permanently as it were, but on their servers, it's only available for a short amount of time. So as you can see there, you've written a text message in Arabic, that's perfect. So I can now click approve. And for some reason it's being a bit glitchy right now. I don't know why that wasn't, it wasn't glitchy this morning when I was showing this in another webinar, but I can click approve. And that should then appear. Let me just click approve. There obviously, is a, yeah, there's a, it's being a bit glitchy today. Normally, it's absolutely fine. I'm just going to refresh the page one more time. But if you could send me some audio, just so you get an idea of how it will, will work. Normally, it's fine. But um, there we are. So feel free. Yeah, okay. I don't know why it keeps glitching. Let me just... Um, yeah, I'm not logged in on my iPad, obviously, but uh, ah, here we are. So yeah, so that's lovely for the Arabic for that to appear. Can anyone record a quick message for me using the audio recorder? Just to show how it works, please. Right, so that's now worked as well. So if anyone could send me some audio right now, just as you know, it could be like literally a few seconds of audio. I can then show how that works. I can then play it back, obviously. So it's got my two bits of audio there. So I just wait. As, there we are. Thank you ever so much. If I now click play, but uh, ah, here we are. So yeah. So that's lovely for the Arabic for that using the audio recorder. Shukran. Just to show. Perfect. Thank you. So I'll approve that. That's lovely. I'll approve the next one as well, which is the text message. And again, I'll I'll just put the the, the link in the chat again. We also re, we need to move on in a second. But if you want to have another go at doing this, I can then click play here. Hi so that's Joe. That works as well. Hi Joe. <laughs> so if anyone could. Thanks, Vicky. That's great. So I click approve. Press play on the next one. Just as you know, like a few seconds yep, of working audio. Fine. So obviously it's going to pick up my voice as well. But obviously, you know, in, a, in an asynchronous situation, you can then choose um, uh, when you record. So always choose uh, to record in a quiet uh, context. And normally when I click approve, it goes up straight away. So there's obviously a bit something a bit glitchy about this but you get the idea, hopefully. So for speaking, I think this is awesome. So thank you ever so much, everyone that's um, done that. Just to finish off with, you can see that there's a, uh, a lock icon, bottom right. So if I click on that, uh, I get the option to lock the conversation. So if I lock the conversation, it means no one else can then add the audio to the thread, which I think is useful. And then it becomes a revision resource. So uh, I think it's a fantastic tool and it's for free but you do, uh, the, you do have to download the audio if you want to keep it permanently because it will expire after a month and a half. I think it is about that. Uh, if you want it to be there permanently on their servers, then you can pay, which I think is about £1.50 a month to do that, um, which is not a lot of money. But if you want to keep it completely free, then you can do that in the way that I've described. Awesome. Thank you ever so much for uh, everyone for their contributions there. There's a video clip as well here. In fact, there's two links. There's one... Uh, on YouTube, which I've um, added, which is embedded here on the slide. So you can then watch that back uh, at your own leisure. And also there's a Vimeo link as well. When I presented this um, uh, website in a teach week recently, um, which you can also watch the video back if you're interested. Here's a, a very long blog post, which I wrote uh, for the Facebook group uh, organized by Linguascope, which is Modern Languages Teachers Lounge. Um, and that's really fantastic as well. Uh, even if I do say so myself. So I shared lots of ideas around um, speaking ideas that can be done in a remote teaching context. So oh, so um, if you go through that um, article, you'll find lots and lots of ideas that you can uh, take advantage of. That's years and years of research, essentially, I put into that, which I'm just sharing with you today. Uh, so you can have a look at that. It gives you lots of ideas around speaking practice in a remote teaching context. Right, here we've got Google Forms. So this was a Google Form which I put together. I'm just gonna give you a quick flavor of this because we haven't got lots of time left. 
Um, so if you've not been using Google Forms, I think that they can also be very motivating, particularly in the sense that you can make a self-marking quiz. Um, to find out how to do that, just go on to YouTube and do a search for Google Forms or Google Quizzes, and there's many, many tutorials on how to do that. But essentially, I uh, saw a, uh, a form which uh, my friend Chris Betcher from North Sydney shared a few weeks ago around different question types you can have in a Google Form. And I thought it would be a really nice idea to share uh, the same type of uh, Google Form, but focusing on language teachers. So the Facebook group, group was a modern language. Uh, let me just go back a second and remind myself. It's um, uh, Modern Languages Teachers Lounge. OK, if you go onto Facebook, you'll find it by searching for it. It's organized by um, by Linguascope. OK, so if I go to this form again, I just give you a flavor of how this works. So the first thing I would recommend is that you put in the surname, first of all, so that when you create a Google Sheet, it allows you to order everything in alphabetical order. Um, you've got different exercise types. So if I click on the, the preview option, which is actually that's what I'm doing right now. Um, uh, here, for example, it said, what is the possibility of the verb aller in French? All of these can be put into Arabic as well. And you've got the different radio buttons here. So this is the multiple choice option and you simply click on the right one. So what I've done is I've chosen them from the different exercise types that are possible in a Google form. I've written the exercise type first of all, and then I've given a literal description on how to put this together. I'm gonna to give you a copy of this in a moment, okay? The next one would be which, pe which picture represents la natation in French, which as we all know means swimming. So you would then click on the A1 here. So in other words, you've got different images which you can add next to each response. This one, um, I've used uh, the snipping tool to take a screenshot of a text, and then I've turned this into a multiple choice question. So again, you could use this for a reading comprehension practice, whereby um, it's not a written text, it's an image of the text which the students can then use for reading comprehension. This next one, how is this person feeling? This is another multiple choice activity. So you have the image here, and then instead of having words for different options, you've got images instead. So again, this is like a type of multiple choice uh, situation. The next one, true or false activity. So again, multiple choice, it explains how to uh, fill this in. So you simply uh, click on one of these according to the question, which in this case is Google Form allows you to use images in questions. So that's obviously true. So you would select the vrai option. For this one, this is when you've got different answers which are actually audio files. So if you click on here, it will then allow you to play the audio. So if I click on the audio player here. Answer one. Okay. Answer and, oh, one. You can then listen back to that. So to do that, what I would recommend is that you use an online recorder, which I'm going to show you briefly right now, online voice recorder. Um, you could use a, a website like Vokaroo as well, but this is really nice. If I, if I press record like this, we'll do the following. So this is an example of using the online voice recorder, which is completely free. It allows you to edit the beginning and the end of the recording, export as MP3, and then you can then upload it straight to Google Drive and use it as a, an audio prompt, as a question or as an answer in a Google form like this. Okay, I then click on here. I then uh, move the slider at the playhead at the, uh, towards the beginning and the end. I then click save. I save my um, recording, so we'll call it Arabic Supplementary Schools Test. Okay, uh, I'll put it on my desktop like this, click save. And then having done that, I need to go to Google Drive click here and I have a folder in Google Drive when I, I'm adding all this audio. So I can just click on the new option, click file upload, select the audio, which is gonna be here. So that's gonna be here. Select the audio, click open, and it uploads into that particular folder, which it's doing right now. Now, there it is. Now, the important thing that you do is that you right click the file and you click get shareable link. And in fact, I would recommend that you right click the folder that it's in and, and click get shareable link. And that means that all the audio will be accessible by anyone who's accessing it within your school. So if I click on get shareable link, this will then come up and I simply make sure that I click copy link and that's what I, that I then paste that into the Google form. 
and that's what I've done here. Okay, so again, it goes to the options of what you need to do to replicate what I've just shown you. The next one is a matching activity. So you, you can um, match up the, the French with the, uh, the English here. Again, that would work fine with Arabic. This is also a multiple choice grid as, it, as it's called. So this is putting the words in the correct order. So you select the different numbers according to the order they should be in. And I've set this up to be um, to enable shuffle row order for each time this activity is accessed. That means it'll be different every single time. So it's not always just the same one. Um, it changes every single time that you do this. This is for dialogue practice. So you can, again, use the multiple choice grid. You put in the different lines of the dialogue. I would recommend up to nine lines, no more than line. Otherwise, you get uh, the scroll bar appearing. I would recommend that for the longer text, you use those as headers of the rows, as I've done here, as opposed to the headers of the, um, the columns, because you can get less um, content there. You get fewer characters. So that's why I would recommend having the numbers along the top in this example and um, the sentences down the side. So that's putting the dialogue back into the correct order. This one is called a drop down um, option. So you have one answer here with lots of wrong answers. So you simply click on the correct one. This is a checkbox one when you have more than one right answer. So you simply click, uh, click on the ones that are correct. This is a, an audio file for a listening comprehension. So you listen to the audio. You then select the statements which are true and you leave blank the ones which are false. This is a grammar activity, short answer, whereby you read the, the um, question, fill in the blank with the correct form of the verb in the perfect tense, and then you then fill it all in. Um, when you said lounge, not forms, that's that. can you clarify what you mean? I'm not sure what you mean. Um, you play the, uh, the video in this example, and then you then fill in the answer. So listen to comprehension. For this one, again, you've got multiple possible answers, correct answers. So for example, you um, then, yeah, that's a different Facebook group. That's not the same one as the one, uh, yeah. Uh, right, so here, as you can see, you've got more than one uh, correct answer. So again, you tick the correct box. Um, and yeah, that's right, Modern Languages Teachers Lounge by Linguascope, that's right, that's what it's called. Uh, in this example, you use uh, the website called Vokaroo, and that allows you to record your answer. So it could be, you know, talk to me about what you did last weekend. You then record the audio like this. Okay, so I'm recording some audio right now. Uh, this, I could be then describing what I did last weekend. I can then click stop. I click save and share. I then click the copy option, which is here. I then go back to my Google form and I paste in the link here, which I'm gonna do right now, like that, and I would then click Submit. And by doing that, it means the teacher can then see all the links to the Vokaroos that you've then done, and then you can then listen to all of those. If you would like to download the audio, you can do that as well. Um, and then you can then mark it by hand, as it were. And then here, you've got the linear scale option, which is you can um, write in a statement, such as online learning is a good idea, and then you can then strongly agree uh, moving to strongly disagree by putting uh, selecting one of the numbers from one to five, as you can see. Yeah, so um, there we are. So that's how that works. And then you submit your answers. If I go up to the top, um, let me just move out of that other way. If I click on the edit option, I can then see. Oh, I can then see the uh, the editable version. And if I click on responses at the top there. I can see I've got eight responses from different teachers that have filled this in for me. So I can see all their answers here. And if I click uh, on the Google Sheet, it will then appear like this. And where their names are, what is your surname? I've got the little arrow here. So I click on the arrow. I can click sort sheet A to Z. So as a result of that, they then are in alphabetical order, which means it will then mar match my... Um, my mark book, which is what I was suggesting earlier. So that's giving you a little insight into uh, doing this with Google Forms. And if I just click on here and I present my screen and I click on the link at the bottom here and I share this with you, you can all have a copy of this Google Form, which means you can then all see it uh, and you can access it and, and use the ideas and make your own Google Forms. And you're very welcome to have that as well. So I appreciate we've only got about another five minutes or so. This is an example of a Google form that was created by um, a Spanish teacher. 
Uh, again, we've got iPhone, you haven't renamed yourself, and never mind. Main concern is cheating using Google Form versus regular tests or assessments. Yeah, I've got another slide about how you can maybe, you know, avoid children um, uh, cheating using um, Google Forms. There is a website called exam.net, which is what I'm recommending a lot, which is a Swedish company, uh, and it's free to access for this year. You upload a PDF, it turns it into a question, uh, sorry, the, the different questions I mean, you upload as a PDF, you can upload audio files as well. And the website monitors your keyboard so you can see whether the children have taken their hands off the keyboard or not uh, for a certain amount of time. You can also ask them to turn their webcams at their hands so you can see whether they're using a mobile device. So, so those are ways in which you can discourage them from using Google Translate. But that's on another slide which we haven't covered today. But uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, there are webinars which I've described that process in a lot more detail. Uh, quizzes is really nice. Uh, there's a listening comprehension activity that you can do, which we don't have time to do right now. But I would really recommend checking that out and particularly how to do audio questions. Um, and it works in Arabic. I know I've, uh, I've searched for it online on Twitter and there are examples of doing this in Arabic. So that's really cool. Uh, Whiteboard.fi again is really nice for whiteboard work. So uh, for motivation, I think that that's really nice to be able to create a class. It then uh, you then give the code to the students that allows you to all draw at the same time. In fact, let me, I think I'm just going to do this live. We've got enough time to do this. I'm going to click on new class. I put in my name like that. I then click create new class. There it is. There's the link. If I can ask everyone to click on that link for me and we can see how this works in real time. I'm going to do the same thing on mine. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to whiteboard.fi on my iPad. I, you then tap, uh, if, you, if I just give you the code, I click on uh, join class. I put in the code, which is um, D55TA. I tap join class. I'm now in. I put my name and I tap join whiteboard class. Right. So what I'd like you to do now, please, is I would like you to draw an image representing how you're feeling right now about remote teaching. So I'm going to do a heart. You can add text as well, but I particularly like the drawing aspect. I think that's very motivational for children, which is what I've shown, which is why, why I'm showing you this. The, um, the MFL Twitter article I've talked about already, really like using whiteboard.fi. If um, you're used to using whiteboard activities, this is a digital way of doing this in a remote teaching context and a nice way to finish the session as well, I think. So feel free to, to draw on the screen right now. I could then click on one of the options. I could click on Chedi as one. I can see it full screen. And I could, for example, click on uh, Screencastify, which is a tool which allows you to record uh, the screen in real time. And I can enable a draw the drawing tools as well. So if I click recording right now, like that, I can then click on the screen and I can actually click on the drawing tool and I can be recording my screen uh, while drawing over the top of your um, recording. So if I click there and click stop. That will now, as you can see, record the screen. I think some of you are actually drawing in the Zoom tool, which is not what I've asked you to do. I've asked you to use the whiteboard.fi, but you can see here that my heart is there appearing. If I unmute the audio, I'll just do that again. Let's just play that again. And, oh, that's interesting. I can't hear my audio. I don't know why that is, but anyway, okay. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm using Screencastify to record the screen and that's how that works. And I can now um, click on the copy shareable link, which I've just done. I can now go to the chat and I can post in the link to the chat so that everybody can now see it. OK, so that's a way of using Screencastify in conjunction with uh, whiteboard.fi. So I'll just um, come out of this and go back to uh, whiteboard.fi, which uh, if I just delete that now and delete, there we are. And then I go back to the page I was just on, which I need to find right now, which, oh, there we are, there we are. Right, so I'm just going to click annotate and clear, and that will get rid of all the, all the drawings. So some of you are using the pen tool uh, in Zoom, which is not what I asked you to do, I asked you to do, use the whiteboard.fi. Anyway, you can see um, how everyone can now draw using that. And you can also click on the cog there and click, um, where is it? Click save all whiteboards as PDF. So I do that right now. 
and click Save as PDF, it exports all your results, can you see? As evidence of what you've been doing, which is also very, very nice, I think. So thank you ever so much, everybody. I'll just go back to my final presentation. And that's a, a bit of feedback about whiteboard.fi from different people in the uh, MFL Twitter arty. My favorite one here is this one from Ms. Ganzorn. Thank you very much. I will think about ways I can use it in my class. Thank you again for whiteboard.fi. It is the highlight of my lockdown. I think my year 10 will be forever grateful to you for it, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. And you've got some other nice bits of feedback there as well. Okay, um, here's an article I wrote again on the um, Linguascope uh, Facebook group, Modern Language Teachers Lounge, about drawing in languages, which you can check out, some more ideas. Wheel of Names is also very motivational. You can check out the links there. You can add in uh, names, uh, images. If I go on to the next one, this is um, called Flippity Randomize, which is again motivational. You can look at the link there, the example. You just go to Flippity and you can create your own activities, uh, which are great. This is how I set it up. Again, you can check out the instructions on the website. That's another Flippity activity. And that's the presentation. So if you'd like to scan that QR code or put the, the link in the chat, I can do that for you right now, in fact. Uh, and I hope you found that useful. Hopefully that's given you lots of ideas on how you can motivate children at the moment. Uh, if they are feeling a bit you know, worried or challenged or what have you, which is completely normal for them to feel like that. I will just put this in the chat for you as well. Oh, sorry, I just ignore that. Let me do that again. I just uh, did, uh, I pressed return too quickly. So, uh, Arabic supplementary schools. And there we are, right? So if you go to that link, it will give you access to the presentation. I'm sorry I, I, I missed out on uh, a few of those at the end. But again, if you go onto my YouTube channel, you'll find other webinars that I've done when I've described how to use, for example, Wheel of Names or the Flippity uh, tool. But um, that, yeah, that should have given you lots of ideas. I think I've answered everyone's question. Let me just go through again. Well, I think I've answered everyone's questions that you, uh, you asked me. Um, yeah. Um, let me just double check. Yep, I think that's everything. So thank you ever so much. I will stop sharing my screen right now. And uh, Tony, I don't know if you want to say a few final words um, and then I'll stop the recording once we've uh, finished, but hopefully everyone's found that useful. Thanks, Joe. No, I'd, all I'd like to add to that is thank you for delivering such a useful and stimulating presentation. It looks from the chat that colleagues found that interesting and beneficial. So uh, thank you for joining us. I, I would just ask though, if any of you guys out there have got any ideas or thoughts for things we can do together, webinars we could have uh, that you might find useful at this time, please contact us and let us know. And you can write to me and Vicky or Emma from the British Council in the UK, or you can communicate with Sindith if you're in Germany, or with Omar Tarabishi if you are in the US. So I think we're ready to call that a day, Joe. Thank you very much indeed. Excellent. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And yeah. uh, if anyone would like me to do other webinars based on your own context, let me know. I've got given you my contact details and uh, it would be my absolute pleasure. So thanks, everyone. Um, see you later. I'm going to stop recording now.